Hi, I'm Olin Schultz, president of More Beer, and I'm here with Dan Funk, owner of the original brew sculpture. And here it is. <laughs> Dan, it's been 15 years. How are you doing? Doing great. Yeah. Hanging in there, and uh, I sure love this thing. Awesome. Well, I remember in 1997, you called up, and we were ordering about uh, every other week. You yeah. were ordering, you were getting like two or three batches at a time, and, and I was hand making them back in winter. Oh, right, those handmade recipes. In the 10 by 10 shed. And we didn't even have any kits, I don't think, at that time. No, because you kept making up. I, I was asking what I, you asked what I wanted, and then you bake up the recipe. Yeah, that was, that was And then hands I was on talking making. to you about being so bored doing it on the stovetop because I couldn't get the right colors of the, of the, the beer and, uh, and, and what a hassle it was. And then my wife was getting upset about the. The smell. <laughs> yeah, because you were doing it in the kitchen at the time. Right, right. And then she just wanted me out of there. Okay. You know, so I said, well, gosh, Olin's got this deal. Okay, tell me about it. Well, you were the, I think at that point, Regan had been making uh, systems since the 80s, and so we had just started in the 90s, and he had an idea about making what he called brew sculptures, and I remember talking to you on the phone and, and mentioning that to you, and then once we told you, you were like, do you guys have that ready yet? Do you have it ready yet? And every time we talked for about four months, you kept asking me if we had it ready. So we really credit you as the inspiration oh, for really? us actually yes. doing it. Yeah. Oh, I, feel so, I don't know if you know that or not. I feel privileged. All right. I feel privileged. And then all she made me do was give up my pinball machine. Really? Well, it's a fair trade. In this into the garage. Well, you know, I had that thing for a long time. Well, oh, that was yeah. part of the whole deal was to get rid of everything I had from Bachelorhood, you know. But you so, did sneak into Bruce sculpture, so. Right, right. How many batches do you think you've brewed on this one? Oh, God, it has to be. I think it's between 60. 60? 60. 60 and 70. So okay. Along the line. That's a lot of beer. That's a lot of beer. Right. And what uh, the first thing we noticed when we showed up was that the paint was still all intact. This was the first painted stand. We said we left you with a can of paint to do touch up, and you haven't had to use it. No. No, in fact, the can went flat. And well, I see this is the original pump, and you see the, the sculpture it still says Dan Funk on it. It's right, the, the only thing I've ever had to replace is, is, is the wash or the gaskets. Perfect on the, on the spigots, and we've changed that design now, but that was Right, I've heard that original. too. So I was hoping that you know, maybe I can donate this to the Moore Beer Museum. So one of the, the stories is we drove up here and delivered this to you as the, as the first customer. We're in the Bay Area. And Right now, today, we're in Redmond, Washington. Sammamish, Washington. Sammamish. Changed the city. name on us right. then, right? Indeed. Yeah. That's all we've changed, though. Same old, same plain place, same garage. Yeah, well, we drove through about a, uh, a couple inches of snow to get your right. whole skid out. And this was all in the back of a small pickup truck, as I recollect. Well, that's the uh, Regan, when we decided, we learned that the, the freight cost was $175 to have it shipped up here. I thought, I can take a vacation for $175, so we put it in the back of his truck, which was a 1972 Ford Courier, and he uh, you know, he called Krusty, which should give you an idea about how far that car should have went, and we wrapped it in saran wrap, you know, those big rolls of stretch type. Right. So we got it in the back, and we had it strapped down, and we haven't even gotten on the freeway, and the thing in the back is going... <laughs> And all that plastic is rattling, and I was like, and the car is noisy in and of itself. And I was like, wow, you know, this is going to be a long trip. And we get on the freeway, and the, the cars are just merging like this. And for anyone that doesn't know, our, our partner, Regan, who we talked a little bit about earlier, is uh, a, a wild man, uh, now just retired this year. And we're getting on the freeway, and the cars are merging, and he... This lady just kind of barely goes in front of him, and, and he slams me back in my seat, and he rips out the window, and he's like, watch out! And he yells some expletives at her, and, and I was like, whoa, 16 hours of breathing is maybe more than I uh, should have bitten off. So, yeah. And then the next stop was he had to stop a, a mile down the road. His idea of going on a road trip was getting a bucket of KFC chicken, putting it in between us, and that was your food for the trip, so you didn't have to stop for another 16 hours. You know? Wow. The bones just flying out the window. And then we got into Oregon on that trip, and he had me go into these brew pubs as we were coming up and uh, convinced me to write an article or a pseudo article so that we could go in and get free beer at these three different brew pubs on this 16 hour trip up to Seattle. Right. Yeah. And so by the time we stopped and uh, had a, our KFC chicken and a couple beers driving up about one o'clock somewhere in Oregon, he said, That's it. And uh, he's like, your turn. 
and then maybe drive the other six hours up to uh, Chris's place, or our partner Chris Gray. Right. We slept for about three hours at Chris's house, and then we came and we brewed a batch of beer with you. An IPA, I believe, was the first one. Good memory. Yeah, because it was an IPA, kind of an IPA. IPA, and then a chop, uh, oatmeal stout. I think Chris did that with me. Oh, he came back and brewed another batch right. with you. Okay. So what, over the years, uh, has been your favorite aspect of this culture? Um, the quantity. Make it 20 gallons. 20 gallons. Just five, five was never enough. Yeah. Five was never enough. And uh, just showing people. Did you, it, when you were making 20 gallons of beer, did you keg that all, or did you bottle some? Did you no, give away I just, some? I just kegged it all. Kegged it all. I see your kegs back there. And I had four refrigerators, you know, you, and I had the sick put in here, especially for brewing. For brewing, awesome. Right. And it's just, this is the perfect cul-de-sac, too, because we've had standing cocktail hour <laughs> for 24 years. Well, that's what happens when you get a 20 gallon brew sculpture right. in your garage, right? Right. And that's been going seven days a week, five o'clock. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. And it started with my neighbor over there, and usually in the summer it's driveway drinking. And we stay out as long as we can. We've got the heaters and, and the whole bit. So what's been your favorite uh, type of beer you brewed on? IPA. IPA. I do remember you getting a lot of You know, IPAs. without a doubt, IPA. I mean, I've done them all. Okay. And uh, I'm just grateful. I finally got my wife off that Hefeweizen and crap stuff. <laughs> You know, and then that raspberry flavored hip of ice and the blueberry flavored hip of ice. I remember you adding extract. Oh, your... God, yes. God, yeah. I hated that. Yeah. You know, it's like, this chick beer, got the chick beer all over the place. But now she's in the pale ale. There's got to be some other takers on the court for that as well. Yeah, but I, gosh, you know, it's, uh, the older I got, you know, it's just like, hey, if you don't like what I've got, you know, it's too bad. Okay. So IPA and, and pale ales. That's where it's at. And that's, that's, it is where it's at. What's been your favorite hop? Oh, God, I don't even know. You've seen some oh, um, the Cascades. Cascades, yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. You can't go wrong with Cascades. Well, you can't. It's, it's a catch-all kind of thing. I mean, I've even, I even got the little hop, hop grower thing out here in the back. Oh, you're growing your own hops? Yeah, I don't use them. It's just kind of like St. Michelle or something, just ornamental. Yeah, perfect. But yeah, i got a nice little hop rack out there. And yeah. I mean, it's, it's really awesome how it just, you know, blossoms out and then you come down the end of September kind of thing. Perfect. What about you, strings? Just the California. Another catch-all. California, White Labs, California, yeast right. has been on your, your house, yeast strain, I think. Right, and then I, I've got the big, uh, what do you call those things? <laughs> looks beakers. Like a, looks like a still that you're describing. Oh yeah, beakers, <laughs> beakers. The big, and I do the, I do the, oh, the uh, yeast starters, right? The big yeast starters, too. Right on. What uh, piece of homebrewing equipment have you found most useful, other than your, your brew sculpture, of course? Oh, the kegging? The kegging, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because I used to do bottles and I just took forever. All right, well, thank you for well, thank you. taking the time That's for so us good today. To see you we'll again. Put, put it up on the, I, I always wanted to come back and shoot this at some point, so 15 right. years later seems like a great thing. Yeah.